I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to the Cisco Certification Video Practice Exam on EIGRP and Route Redistribution. And I'm going to throw a little OSPF in there just to keep things interesting as well. I do want to mention that in this particular video practice exam, I've already configured Route Redistribution. So we're not just going to go over the answers, but I'll be able to show you the answers on live Cisco routers and switches. The 10 minute time limit on the videos on YouTube uh, really precludes us from configuring route redistribution step by step here. However, I do have a three part series on route redistribution on YouTube. And if you're watching this on the Bulldog blog at the bryantadvantage.blogspot.com, I will put those three videos right below this one. So while you'll see route redistribution after it's been configured in this video, you can then watch that three part series for free, of course, and then actually see it done step by step. Let's tackle the first question though in today's practice exam. Name the reliable and unreliable EIGRP packet types. All important types, but I'll give you another hint. Three are considered reliable and two are considered unreliable. Let's add for question three, which of these statements best describes what you'll see when you run the show IP EIGRP topology command? Will you see the successors, the feasible successors, both or neither? Question four, can you ever have multiple successors for a single given route? I mean, is it even, is it even possible? And if so, why is it possible? Which statement best describes this scenario? And as always, pause the video if you need a few extra seconds, but we'll move to question five so we have plenty of time to be on the live equipment. You've injected OSPF routes into an EIGRP autonomous system with the redistribute OSPF1 command. What will the AD be once those routes are redistributed into EIGRP? Of course, we better know what that AD is and what it, what it does. Let's get back to question one here and the reliable and unreliable EIGRP packet types. I'm gonna bring up the live equipment here and I believe we've already run show IP EIGRP topology and we'll be coming back to that in just a moment. But these three packet types, update, query, and reply, those are your reliable packet types. And hellos and acknowledgments or acts, while certainly important to EIGRP operation, we can't operate EIGRP without hellos, they are considered unreliable. Question three, what can we see when we run, when we run show IP EIGRP topology? Well, let's bring that live equipment right back up and you can see that we will see both successors and feasible successors because here on router one you can see the path to this particular network and this particular network as well it mentions two successors but you've got three routes you know and here are the next hops via 123.3, 13.3 and 123.2 so we've got three different ways to get there but two of these paths are considered successors. So you will see successors and feasible successors in the topology table. It's when you run the route table, which we'll do in just a moment, that you will only see successor routes. Speaking of that, can you even have multiple successors for a single route? Certainly you can, and we just saw that in action. But we've got three choices here that all begin with yes, so we better make sure we get the right one. You don't need to use the variance command to have multiple successors. You will have them by default if the metrics happen to be exactly the same. And let's bring the live equipment back up and you can see for each of these two networks where we have two successors but three overall uh, legal routes to get there, loop free routes, you can see that the metric for the first two is exactly the same. That's why they are um, multiple successors here. The metric is exactly the same. The metric here for the feasible successor is a little bit higher than that of the successor routes. And there is no such thing as the multiple successor condition in D. I just made that up. Uh, let's go on to question five then with this redistribution scenario. 
you've put OSPF routes into an EIGR PAS with redistribute OSPF1. What will the administrative distance be? For you CCNA candidates, you're not going to be doing much actual route redistribution, but this is still a very good value for you to know. And of course, UNP candidates, you're going to be doing route redistribution. So let's bring the routers back up, and I'll show you, first off on router 2, let me see if I've actually... I need to do a quick right there. No, nope. here's the redistribute command that I used on router 2 to put these routes into OSPF. And you can, excuse me, into EIGRP. And you can see that I used redistribute OSPF there. Now, I want to go over to router 3. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you that over here, I used a redistribute connected command to put the locally connected routes into EIGRP. Router 1 is an EIGRP neighbor of both routers 2 and 3, and the reason I did that two different ways is to show you that regardless of how the routes were redistributed into EIGRP, whether it be from another dynamic routing protocol or whether it be uh, just the connected routes, they're going to show up the same way in the routing table, and that is marked with D and EX. That is the key. It's D and EX, and you can see, as we know, the first number in these brackets is always the administrative distance. So when you redistribute routes into EIGRP, they are then considered external EIGRP routes, and they're going to have an administrative distance of 170. Again, head over to the Bulldog blog at themarantadvantage.blogspot.com to see that three-part series on route redistribution. It's definitely worth watching for both CCNA and CCNP candidates. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the Bulldog blog.